Okay guys, today we're going to be machining our handle rack here. Our dual handle rack. This is uh, for our dead blow and our vice handle. Now, to get set up, I'm just going to be doing, uh, putting some masking tape down here. And I'm going to super glue this on here so that when we mount it in the vise, it's going to give me some support up under here. I've machined angle before when I did the uh, TTS racks. And it just doesn't give you any support, and so it kind of vibrates and gives you a not such a great finish there. Uh, this is a utilitarian piece, and so it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to go ahead and take the extra time to do this. So I'm just going to take some super glue. It doesn't take much. I'm just going to uh, get a little on here just to kind of hold it like there's a dried up piece there. One trick when you're using super glue is before you store it, if you blow air in the end of it, just with your mouth, just blow it so that it doesn't get stuck in the tip there and it kind of pushes it back down in the bottle. And then cap it off and store it upright. When you go to use it again, it won't be all dried up and it'll still work. So we're just going to place this on there like that. It doesn't have to be uh, in any particular, just kind of get it eyeballed in the center. And then we'll go ahead and put this in the vise and get our parts set up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a parallel in front of it like this so that it's pushing up against this uh, instead of clamping against the piece here because this is not really straight. We're going to be I'm going to be probing on this corner here so I'm going to space it off just this distance here. I think this is about uh, Five eighths or something, and then we'll tighten this up a little bit, get it snug. Then want to get it set. Double check it again. That's good. Now we're going to just probe it. We're going to find our Z height. So we've got our part probed on this corner. We've got our Z height set. Uh, we should be ready to go. I'm going to remove the touch probe. And uh, we should be ready to machine this out. Alright guys, this is a typical thing that happens to a lot of us. And, and I get questions about this all the time. So I tried to start the G-code, and it gives me an error. It gives me a soft limit warning. So don't hit continue. You need to find out what the soft limit is. If you look down here at the bottom, it says soft warning on Y max. So somewhere in the G-code, uh, the Y axis is going past the machine uh, maximum travel. So we're going to hit no. Stop here. I'm going to go in here and look at my G-code. Now I know what's going on because uh, in my post processor I have it so that the machine will move 
of the stock out of the way here and I'm pretty sure that this is the issue right here so I'm going to correct that and then we'll try it again and see what happens so you can see now it works because that was the problem
well you can see that last little move there at the end after it uh, gets done machining that's where I was having my soft limit issue and I, I get that question probably I don't know 20 times a year or something and they want me to people want me to they email me wanting me to look at their G code all sorts of things and you just have to go through, comb your G-code. It could be anywhere, especially if it's something you edited like uh, I did there. Uh, you just check it. But that turns out really good. Now, this is... I'm not going to do anything to the top surface there. I'll just probably hit it with a scotch Uh It's just a utilitarian part, like I said before, so... Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Alright, so I'm going to get ready for the next setup and then we'll bore the two holes and finish the part off okay guys so I've got the part set up in here I just put this under here as a spacer to get it off the vise there so we don't drill into the vise and uh, we should be set we're just going to bore a couple holes and then just knock off these corners and clean up those edges Get it out of there. Still a little bit of a sharp edge right here. I'll take a Naga tool and knock that off, but uh, should work just fine. You can see how that countersink will just kind of lock that in place. So that'll be good. And then your dead and below may be different from mine, but uh, this is 1.2 inches across here in between, and and the notch just kind of locks it in place. I don't I don't know that you necessarily need that, but works pretty good. All right, I'm gonna clean up these edges, and uh, we'll scotch bright this, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay guys, there's the finished piece. Uh, turned out pretty well good. So, I believe this dead blow came from Harbor Freight, but it's been 20 years probably. I'm sure they haven't really changed much, but uh, this dimension in between here is 1.2. And the dimension on the handle here is uh, 5 8 and it just goes in and then it just can kind of lock in place with this uh, chamfer there 
I have to confess, uh, this design here was, I drew this up uh, and modified this off of uh, my buddy Wyatt. He sent a video one day of, uh, he was showing me something on his machine and I happened to notice uh, this handle rack in his video. He's got two handles, so his is a, a, a three position rack here. And uh, I told him he was holding out on me. He, he asked me what I meant and I said, the handle rack, where'd you get that? And he said, I made it. I'm like, man, I thought we were friends, but, uh, so anyways, uh, he sent me the model and, uh, took, took a look at it, checked the dimensions, checked the dimensions of my handles, and then drew this up, but, I appreciate the, uh, inspiration there for this, uh, handle rack, Wyatt, and, the, and, uh, of course, I was able to, uh, share it with you guys. Uh, I'll also post the Fusion files if you guys want to uh, download the Fusion file and make these yourself. Of course, uh, they'll be available as well. So, guys, listen. I bought two, stock, two pieces of uh, stock. I machined four of these. Of course, I'm using one over here. And these three right here. Any of you guys want these, leave a comment in the video. I don't know. If you guys pay shipping, how about $10? Uh, I think it's like $5.95 for shipping or something. And then uh, that'll take care of the stock and the shipping. And I'll send you these out. I got three extra. Anybody that wants one, uh, post in the video and uh, or shoot me an email. That'd probably be better. Uh, and I'll... Uh, I'll get one sent out to you. Alright guys, if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in, click on that subscribe button down here below. Uh, when I post a new video, they'll send you a link and if it's something you're interested in, you can stop by and check it out. As always guys, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. Thanks for watching, and most importantly, be safe.